welcome to SAD TV's news. I am Shana Esprit, your presenter. In our top stories, business owners warned against selling expired goods. PM defends Barbados government socio-economic policies. Syria conflict, chemical attack kills hundreds. And in sports, Jamaica completes WICB's West Indies Cricket Board under 19 double. Details of this will follow. Music is life, you don't know. And I'm all set and ready to blow. I got some blazes out there I wanna see. It's gonna be irate, yeah. So put your hand in the air just for me. I wanted a for the world to see. Cause I wanted you when me a fire. I'll bring the flame. It's gonna be irate. Yeah. Boom, this is Mr. Nye, and you're listening and watching Sat Telecoms. Boom! Welcome back. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt says that the new filling station, which officially opened on Tuesday, August 20th, will improve the livelihood of the fishermen and, by extension, the entire community of Scotshead. The St. Mark's filling station was funded by Petrocarib Dominica and is one of six filling stations functioning throughout the island. Fishermen, we say this is an opportunity for you to create a better future for yourselves and for your family, where on every gallon that is sold, you get 50 cents rebate. That goes to you, the fishermen and the community, to be spent in, in a manner in which you deem fit and appropriate to the benefits of all the masses. In Fonsejan, just in about a year, Petrocarry gave back to Fonsejan about $22,000 back to the community, back to the fisheries cooperative to spend in the community. If you hear Scotia could get about $30,000 every year, you can imagine the kind of contribution that could make your Mr. Skerritt said these projects are established to empower communities and the ordinary working class people to help elevate their economic standards. Especially through education policy, ensuring that every single child in this country has the opportunity to attend school, not only having access, but the means of taking advantage of the access through the provision of textbooks, uniforms, and, and transportation fees for students. And you hear in Scotland and, and so far, you've been benefiting this for years. When none of your children can stay on the side of the road because he or she cannot pay the bus fare. This government has been paying this on the children's behalf. So that they have no excuses not to learn at school. And not to be at school on time. And we've been doing so as a national program. Acting General Manager of PDV, Ian Pinard, says the contribution of the company to national development is of great importance. We have seen the much anticipated and talked about Sufri and Scots and City Defense Wall under the Petrocarib Fund. We have seen all the massive infrastructure through Petrocarib funding in Dominica. They are the Melbourne Hall Airport, the Rosalie Pitti Sufri Link Road, the Metallic Waste Cleanup in Portsmouth, the Tatan City Defense Wall, the Grand Bay Police Station, the 50 Petrocasas around the different communities in Dominica, the Salibir Primary School, to name a few. All of these are significant investment in our country. I now address the Fisher's Fuel Station, where we have constructed six gas stations around the island so far. They are in the Fossejan Fisher's Fuel Station, the St. David Cooperative in the community of San Sauveur, the Marigot Fisheries Cooperative, the Portsmouth Fisher Cook Cooperative, the National Association of Fisher Folk in Roseau, and right here in Scotshead. According to Mr. Pinard, $1.7 million have been invested in the six filling stations thus far, and an additional four will soon be constructed in the communities of Dubla, Ansdime, Layu, and Maho, costing approximately $1.2 million. Reginald Austri, Minister for Housing, Lands, and Telecommunications, and charged with responsibility for Petrocarib, says to date many persons are trying to destroy Petrocarib. You've been hearing the recent comments, how much money missing, how much money we cannot pay, but we will give you the assurance that we can pay and we will pay. Once everything is in, we have the money to pay. 
But once everything is in place and everything is straight, then we will pay. But there are other reasons why they want to destroy Petro Carib. Because we've said that Petro Carib is not about making mass profits to put in the bank. We are a company, we have to pay our bills, we have to pay our light, our water. We have to meet our commitments too. But we're ensuring that the proceeds, or most of the proceeds from Petro Carib, goes back to the community. Petro Carib has always been and will continue to make contributions to society, Mr. Ostry said. In more news, 30 Dominicans will represent five credit unions island-wide at the 11th OECS Credit Union Summit to be held in St. Kitts and Nevis. The summit will run from August 21st to 25th under the theme Innovation, Cooperation, Integration, Strategies for a Successful Cooperative Movement. This year's topic include innovations in lending, adding value to cooperatives membership, building relationships between credit unions and annoying financial cooperatives, and cooperative societies, regulations, and statutory reporting. Last year, the summit was held in Dominica with a total amount of 300 participants, also representing five credit unions from the OECS under the theme, Cooperatives, the Engine of Growth in Tough Economic Times. President of the Dominica Cooperative Society's League Limited, Cletus Joseph, in his address last year, said the theme was chosen in keeping with the celebration of International Year of Cooperatives as designated by the United Nations. This year's summit is expected to be just as successful as last year. The summit is held every year to allow credit unions to come together to discuss issues affecting the movement. The Dominicans will return home on Sunday, August 25, 2013. In other news, the second annual bridal fair organized by Caribbean Exquisites, Nature Island Weddings, Discover Dominica Authority and Dreamy Weddings, held on August 11, 2013, is being hailed a success. The event showcased the products and the services of the wedding and honeymoon service providers, promoting Dominica as a wedding and honeymoon destination. Representatives from Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, Trimi Weddings and the University of Fleur and Dhaka were in attendance and were thrilled with the presentations of the wedding service providers. Mrs. Valerie Renee Lavier of a Royal Caribbean Cruise Line stated, she is happy that she can now have her staff offer Dominica as a viable destination for weddings and to see all the vendors participating and showcasing exactly what it is they have to offer. Chief Executive Officer of the Discover Dominica Authority, Mr. Colin Piper, stated, Ever since legislation was passed to make it easier for Dominica to host weddings, they have been taking the sector more seriously. I certainly want to thank uh, all that have been involved in putting this together. Uh, it takes quite a bit of work. Uh, I certainly would like to at least single out Miss Kathy Coffey and Miss Odile John Baptist from the Discover Dominica Authority who have uh, worked with the other private sector uh, to put this second annual bridal fair together. As we look to making 90,000 visitors by 2015, we are looking for any and all opportunities that would invite people to come and visit Dominique. And we believe that the romance sector, whether it be a destination wedding or a honeymoon, is something that can attract people to Dominica. So I implore all involved in the industry, all the stakeholders, uh, to make sure that they put their A game on and that uh, they are very competitive in the offerings, in the products and services and the offerings that they put forth. The Chief Executive Officer of Dreamy Weddings, Mrs. Natalie John, described Dominica as a unique and a niche market for destinations weddings. Through her efforts, a representative of the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line was in attendance at the event in order to boost the destination wedding industry in Dominica. Because destination weddings have become a huge market over the past few years, it is important that Dominica continues to refine 
and develop its product to the needs of the industry. Dreamy Weddings, as a Caribbean destination wedding planner, will continue to work along with both public and private sector partners in creating an enhanced profile for the island in the destination wedding market. When a couple is planning a destination wedding, the first thing they look for is what best suits their needs and what would they want for the guests to experience. This is very important as when a couple is choosing an island, they look for what makes it stand out from the rest, which is where you as an island use your natural beauty to attract these clients in showcasing what you have to offer. 45 businesses displayed locally made products including jewelry, dresses, wood carvings, wedding cakes, wedding favors and crafts and services including decor, bridal registries, venues, wedding planners and honeymoon packages as well as food and beverages. The event also featured an extravagant fashion show which displayed Creole wedding attire, the latest trends in wedding fashion, hairstyles and nail artists. The Bridal Fair Organizing Committee wishes to express heartfelt thanks to all the organizations and individuals for their assistance in hosting the 2013 Bridal Fair. Plans for the 2014 Bridal Fair is already underway. In other stories, business owners are being cautioned to refrain from the sale of expired goods to the public as this is not a safe practice. Chief Environmental Health Officer Mr. Anthony Scotland noted the consumers are the ones with the purchasing power, so they should ensure they read all labels on the products to avoid buying expired goods. He explained once the best before dates on food products have passed, the business owner has the responsibility to remove the items from the shelves. They say dry foods or foods not considered to be potentially hazardous shall not be removed. This food must, however, be placed on a separate shelf, label, best before they pass. So we'll, we, we propose that you can put it on a, on a separate shelf. And these foods can be held up for two months, 60 days, after which it, it can be removed. So we have sent a proposal to the Ministry of, um, to the, to the Ministry of Health for amending the regulation to deliver that. Because we would we, we prefer that we have have it reg be regulated, stating clearly after the best before date has passed, this is the time that it can remain or can be offered for sale. So both the consumers and the and the distributors can know that is the situation. This comes following a recent discovery of a supermarket observed to have been selling expired items at reduced price some of which had expired five and six months ago, a practice that is dangerous to consumers' health. Some of the meat at that same supermarket was observed to have mold, indicating that it was being sold way beyond its expiry date. Illegal practices were also spotted, as the best before date were removed on meat products. Well, that is a, that is a illegal practice. The, the, you should be um, removing, attract the label, Part of the label is that the best before the, uh, the, the date markings. So if you even in other words, again, consumers have to know they, they should not be purchasing goods that do not have those markings on them. So you have to get wise. If a businessman is, is removing the date markings on the goods, you, can, you just leave his goods on the shelf. Because legally, uh, you have the right to, to re, uh, an environmental officer can remove it also. If it's, if it's, there's no date because it needs to have a date marking on the food. You understand? Part of your labeling standard is that the, the food should have a label stating either it is expired it, best before, used by, that sort of thing. So again, we come back to consumers. Consumers have to get wise, they need to read their label when they're going to purchase foods. He noted, although the environmental health officers have the obligation to remove these goods, the consumers have the legal power to simply not buy the items. Mr. Scotland says consumers have to be alert, specifically as it relates to hazardous goods, including meat, dairy, and egg products. 
under the laws of Dominica once there is proof of business owners engaging in such illegal practices, legal action can be taken against them. However, Mr. Scotland noted these legislations need to be seriously enforced. So all that, all that proposal on, the, on, the, on this regulation on date markings, we intend to hold a meeting with the stakeholders after getting um, the green light from the, the Ministry of Health, that is CMO and his Philippine Secretary as to how we move forward on the issues of date marking in Dominica. Because basically we need to have a collaborative effort between environmental health, um, bureau standards, and the Ministry of Agriculture to deal with the situation of um, date markings on foods. In that proposal, the Environmental Health Department will advocate for a shelf life of 60 days for dry goods and 21 days for perishable food after the best before date. This regulation proposal will be submitted to the government to enact with the hopes that by mid-year 2014, this will take effect. He is advising the business owners to adopt a method of the first in, first out, where the first set of goods to expire would go on the shelves and would be the first to be sold. They should also employ staff who will be dedicated to this method, so it works as it is intended to. In more stories, Parliamentary Representative for the Rosa Central constituency, Norris Prevo, is concerned about the government's decision to invest in a coffee processing plant at One Mile Portsmouth. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt said in the 2013 to 2014 budget presentation that the plant will see the processing of 2,000 tons of coffee bean per year. In order to deliver this level of supply to the Venezuelan market, which has already been secured, approximately 2,000 acres of coffee will be required. It will be a big mistake. The government is making a big mistake to try to put Dominica into mass coffee production. Dominica is a small island. The countries that produce mass coffee are countries like Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Costa Rica, Chile, Bolivia, Venezuela, and so forth. These countries, and of course some African countries, these countries in the Latin Americas produce so much coffee they don't know where to sell it. They have cheap labor, they, ha they use poor environmental practices, a lot of chemicals, child labor to harvest their coffee. And their price is low, that is why their price is low. So there is no way we can ever go into mass coffee production to compete with them and to sell back coffee to them. Mr. Privo said Dominica has already established a name by producing high quality coffee for the niche market called Cafe Dominique. Therefore, if Dominica ventures into importation of coffee from Venezuela, it will tarnish Dominica's reputation in the coffee production. We are asking the government to recognize that Dominica is a small island that we have certain advantages in terms of niche market and high quality in tourism. The same thing goes for our tourism. Dominica cannot go into mass tourism. Dominica has to go into special areas of tourism like health and wellness, ecotourism, and what we call agrotourism, which includes coffee, cocoa production, and things of that nature. The coffee processing plant was donated by deceased Venezuela President Hugo Chavez and construction of the plant commenced in April of this year by a joint company Venezuela Dominica Vendom. In entertainment, Tara Packet, better known as TZ, originally from Foncole and Grand Bay, is one of Dominica's local artists opening for St. Lucian artist Scottish this weekend to headline the Foam and the Fork Fet. TZ is a rap artist with a bit of singing experience, which she says was gained from her family tree. She said most of her family is involved in the music industry. She also reminisced on her very first song that she performed at the age of 14. My first song I did, I was 13, no, I was 14. I just turned 14 when I, I went to the state for summer vacation to see my dad and he was he had just finished his first album and I was like um I gonna do my song I gonna do my song maybe you'll feature me on you know 
one of his songs or something. So I started writing my song, you know. I write it, I wrote it, and then I never got to record it. So sometimes I would write, 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 and I would never record. But, you know, when I started recording myself, um, <clears throat> I get on a track with featuring my cousin, Rap in My Hood, with um, Jason Ray and Quartz from Gambe, Music Express Production, and it's a great song. One of Tizi's main concern is that she believes that Dominicans do not support their local artists as much as they should. According to her, the international music is being supported more than our music here in Dominica. Because Dominica have a lot of talented people, trust me. It's not just me, it's a lot of talent out there. But you know, the people will more push, you know, outsiders' music. I mean, it's kind of natural, they will more um, push um, international artists than their own local artists. To me, that is the only part of it, I would say. Not even just having rap, but in music down here in Dominica. They don't try to um, push their own people, you know? Some of the artists TZ has performed with includes Colton T, WCK, Skinny Banton, Dice, Prophet, and The Roses Crew. One of her recent performances was held in Newton, which she said the crowd responded very well to. Her opening act for Scottish will be hosted in Grand Bay on Saturday, August 24th. TZ invites the public to come along and support her. And on Sunday, I have a show with um, the Miss Cutie pageant. I'll be on the lineup with Colton T and, you know, Cross Vibes, um, KU and Anderson and, you know, I'll be performing up there on Sunday, that's the 25th. Um, it starts at 3 o'clock. You could bring your kids because it's a kiddies pageant. It's a cuties pageant. It's for kids and so It's going to be a great show. You know, it's going to be great. So you all should come and, you know, support Saturday and Sunday, that is. <laughs> this is the message that she's trying to pass on to the public. I, I trying to get equality, you know, that what I trying to do because, you know, people will say like my mother always tell me I cannot do it on my own, you know, but you can to me because if Martin Luther and you know Tupac, Rosa and everybody they just didn't do anything how would be to this we still have to try trying to help you know help the world you know through music you know but to get equality that everybody have everybody can have you know some don't need to have and the others don't have that's what I do not like you know I wish it will just end let everybody eat let everybody live the, I mean, life is to live and the land is here. That's what God gave us. I mean, I don't know why some should have and some should not. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.